think the key to restorative practice is that it gives you a responsibility and you, you're in a position where you can take care of your own actions and you can move on from them. And I think giving young children that responsibility helps them grow as their own person. I think with the foundation that we had at primary school and the lessons that we were taught, it definitely made the transition easier. It's easy to just say sorry and move on, but without that healing process, it's it's hard to forget the issue. And I think the restorative practice definitely helps you sort out the issue and then move on and also helps and gives you ideas about how to deal with it. Well, I know at home, my mum has always had the restorative practice cards handy and there's always one on her dressing table or in her wallet or something. So that's in- impacted a family life for me, even with my siblings. Like she won't sit there and read the card, but she'll recall questions from that card and it just makes you stop and think and you calm down for a second and reflect on what actually happened before you keep getting all fired up and make the problem worse. I think you do need a clear way of managing difficulties because if you got, if it's all complicated, then people won't understand it, so they won't use it, and they'll just revert to screaming, kicking, and, or, and physical violence. If you think about it, a lot of kids have a lot of problems, and there's not many teachers, so the teachers get annoyed a lot. So if you keep it small, then the teachers don't get annoyed, and you fix the problem by yourselves. So it helps keeping it small. They should have a bigger emphasis on um, not just detentions and. Um, all that because the kids don't learn from detentions as much as they do about talking out about the problem and having a conference with the teacher and the other student involved. The McKillop kids, they they like go way stop and then they talk about the problem. But other kids, they just like if it's a little push or shove, they escalate into a couple of punches and all that. But the McKillop kids stop it in its track and talk about it. Also to help self-reflect on what happened, helps you understand why you did it and whether or not it was valid. If we had arguments like in class or on the football field or whatever, um, I seemed to resolve it a lot easier. Like I'd talk to people about it before it actually happened. And then like I'd ask them similar like little questions like, or I'd try to think to it myself and think it through. And then I think that helped a lot. Like, without that, I wouldn't have had anything to go by. Um, I think the school became better from learning restorative justice. Like, before we had that, like, it was a good school. But I think when we when we established that, we realised that there's a lot more ways we can solve things. And I think if, if all schools take it into consideration, it would be a lot easier for everyone and they'd be able to solve things in a small way like, like we did. And I think that would help everyone. I think once it started, it spread more than what I think of what it was expected. I think it got to lots of clubs and lots of sporting clubs, especially and went on the field and off the field and just dramas everywhere throughout the community. It helped everyone. I think what restorative practice does is, is allow you to step back and think about what, what you personally have done in the situation rather than point the finger and I think that that is one of the things that even still today and, and I'm being honest here that I still really talk about it. I remember that from my days at MacKillop and, and doing the restorative practice. That's, that's where it's come from. It is very, very effective because as I said before, often when you have a dispute or something to resolve or just even a conversation, it can often escalate into something more whereas if you're using the restorative practice principles, it, it, it sorts it out then and there. The last thing you want is a disturbance in the classroom, you know, even if it's just small, you know, it, it's a great thing for learning in the learning environment. It's a great way for team building. And I think it's also a great way to help other people out, you know. I know one of our strongest mottos at McKillop was never see a need without doing something about it. And I've found restorative practice has been a, has enabled me to see, you know, someone in conflict, see that need, and I've been able to go in there and, and, and help them to sort it out. When using the restorative practice principles, you take a step back and, and you look at what you've done in the situation. And I think 
um, not only do you learn about the other person and the issue that's going on, but you learn about a lot about yourself and you think, you know, this is something I've done. Next time I won't do that. So you you can see that what you're doing and you're able to reflect on that. And that's a, a, a self-learning. From experience, I've seen teachers simply deal out, you know, consequences, punishments and stuff like that. And I, I you know, the ki- from students, I've, I've had students come up to me and, and say, you know, how do I, I don't deserve this. I don't know why I'm getting this punishment. And when you don't know that you're, that you're getting the punishment or why something's happening, it, it immediately, you're, you're unable to learn from that experience. So I think that if teachers, even students, me, such as leaders and stuff like that, were, were able to use the restorative principles, not only will the issue be resolved, but people will be able to learn from that and develop as people. And I think that that's something that's critical. School's not only a place about learning and, and being a- academic as such, but it's a place for you to grow and develop as a person. So I think that if teachers were aware of that, as well as students, that it'd just make a learning experience so much more enhanced for, for, for individuals. Mm-hmm.